Hi, welcome to this video. So in this video, I will teach you about classification of lubrication or types of lubrication. So in another video, we have learned about friction. And for macroscopic condition, we have learned that friction, we can have two types of friction. One is called sliding friction and another is called rolling friction. So these are the two major types of friction that we encounter in any engineering system. So sliding friction is basically produced when two surfaces are sliding against each other and rolling friction is experienced when a roller this is a wheel and it is rolling over this surface. So sliding friction is high and rolling friction is very low friction you can achieve. So, so these are the two types of friction. Lubrication is basically a solution. is a solution for reducing friction. So for sliding type of friction, we can use lubricants or any other kinds of solution for reducing friction in sliding. Rolling friction by definition, rolling friction is very low. So in principle, we do not need any lubrication for rolling friction. But in any kind of rolling situation, for example, if it is a ball bearing, so ball is rolling between two surfaces. In any kind of rolling situation, there will be some amount of sliding. So it is very rare that we can achieve 100% rolling. So there will be some amount of sliding. So in order to reduce friction during sliding, we still need lubrication. And another reason why we need lubricant in rolling is because in the event of loading or very impact loading or if there is vibration, in that case, some amount of lubricant can provide a cushioning effect. So it helps in damping the interaction. So there are some role of lubrication in rolling friction as well and sliding friction basically depends on lubrication for reducing friction. So therefore we need to understand about lubrication. So here I will discuss about types of lubrication or we can call it classification. So this is uh, we will discuss in this video today. So what are different types of lubrication that we can use to reduce friction in sliding conditions? So first type of lubrication we can use is called solid lubrication. So solid lubrication is basically a kind of dry sliding. So when two surfaces are touching each other and in relative motion. So there will be some interaction between the asperities of these two materials. Some solid can give you very high friction and some solids can give you low friction. So in solid lubrication, we basically depend on the material property. The, the two pair, we have got two materials A and B. So we depend on the relative properties 
or the interfacial friction of these two pairs of material. So it's basically a material selection process. So we can select a material which can give us low coefficient of friction for solid lubrication. So there are many materials, for example, graphite is traditionally used as a solid lubricant. In modern days, we can use plastics, for example, PTFE. PTFE gives low coefficient of friction. Another material is called MOS2, molybdenum disulfide. So these are the materials, some of the materials that can be used as a solid lubricant or for solid lubrication. Another type of lubrication we can call starved lubrication. So this is basically a solid lubrication with some amount of lubricant. So very little amount of lubricant in the form of vapor can be used or sometimes uh, material in the form of foam or porous material. Porous materials can be used in which we have impregnated some amount of liquid lubricant. So this is called starved lubrication because this is a combination where solid to solid with some amount of lubricant works and it reduces the friction quite drastically. Another kind of lubrication we can use is called grease. So we are quite familiar with grease. So grease is basically a, a form of lubricant, but here in this case, the lubricant, the oil is used as a lubricant with thickener. So thickener basically gives the very high viscosity. So therefore, the grease can be used in a situation where we need lubrication for quite long period of time, but without any kind of maintenance because we do not have to re-grease so often. So grease is always present. Grease is quite often used for rolling element bearings because it, it provides, because it is thick, so viscosity is high. So because of high viscosity, grease can provide lubrication as well as damping effect or cushioning effect. So grease is another kind of lubrication. The third type of lubrication we can call as fluid film. So in fluid film lubrication, we use actually a liquid or gas because fluid means both liquid and gas. So we can use either a liquid or a gas and the liquid or the gas forms a kind of film, a layer between two surfaces and that's how it provides lubrication. So the so fluid film lubrication can be divided into liquid. liquid fluid film and another will be gas. So these two are basically works on the same principle which is fluid film lubrication but just because we use liquid in one case another case we use gas and often we use air as the gas. And there are some advantages and disadvantages of these two types of lubrication. And one very important difference between the two is that liquid is considered as incompressible. So this is incompressible material whereas gas lubrication or gas is compressible. So this, this property of the fluid itself gives some differences between the two. Otherwise, the principle of liquid lubrication and gas lubrication are exactly the same. Now this 
Liquid lubrication can be divided into several other types. One is called boundary lubrication. So boundary lubrication So for example if we have got a bearing here and if the li liquid lubrication is not very effective so in that case the boundary lubrication helps because the boundary lubrication by nature actually forms a kind of film of some organic material on the surface on both surfaces so this works on some chemistry some tribochemistry and it forms a kind of layer and this layer of organic material helps to protect these two surfaces so these two surfaces can be steel so the boundary lubrication or boundary lubricant basically helps to protect these two surfaces when the liquid lubrication is not very effective. So that means there will be some contact between the two but the solid to solid contact will be avoided because there will be substance in between here. And these substances are basically some organic um, molecules and this boundary lubrication actually is made effective by some addition or called additives. So that's why we have additives in lubricants so that boundary lubrication can be effective when the liquid lubrication is not very effective. The second one we can call mixed lubrication. So mixed lubrication is basically a combination of boundary lubrication and the next one which is coming is hydrodynamic lubrication. So it's a combination of boundary and hydrodynamic lubrication. So let's discuss the hydrodynamic lubrication. So hydrodynamic lubrication is the most effective in terms of reducing coefficient of friction and increasing the life by making wear to almost zero. And hydrodynamic lubrication works on the principle that when two surfaces are in relative motion and there is a liquid here and it works same for the gas lubrication as well. So when there is relative motion and this is this one is stationary and there is some load here so because of the converging convergence here a hydrodynamic pressure is built up inside this and this hydrodynamic pressure actually supports the load so the load bearing depends upon how fast this surface is moving so the relative velocity the viscosity of this fluid so these are the two important parameters that will decide what kind of load bearing capacity this can have and this inclination is very important so this because of this converging action a kind of pressure is built up, hydrodynamic pressure is built up and this pressure basically lifts the, this pressure takes the load, the bearing load. So this can work between the two surfaces if there is a convergence. So this kind of convergence can also be created in journal bearing. So for example, if this is a shaft and this is the bearing, And if the shaft is rotating in clockwise direction, then the liquid will be pushed between these two convergence here. So there is a convergence here 
and therefore the liquid will be pushed and because of this pressure the hydrodynamic pressure will be created and this hydrodynamic pressure will act in in this direction so therefore if you have got the load you have applied the load so this load can be lifted and it can support the load the important thing of hydrodynamic lubrication is there must be a liquid here and this liquid film must be formed and this film can form only if there is enough relative velocity so the velocity has to be enough so that this hydrodynamic action can take place and and this hydrodynamic pressure built up can lift the load uh, lift the load so this is very important so in this case the rpm of the shaft is very important as well as the viscosity and the temperature so this is the principle of hydrodynamic lubrication in hydrodynamic lubrication since the two surfaces are separated and there is a liquid film here therefore the coefficient of friction is extremely low and wear is almost zero so only when the hydrodynamic lubrication is acting in that case wear can be zero friction can be very low but in any kind of bearing the hydrodynamic action doesn't happen all the time because it depends upon the relative velocity and when the bearing has to start in the beginning the relative velocity has to be very very low because it starts from zero similarly when the bearing has to stop at that time from very high rpm to zero so again at that point this velocity will be zero the relative velocity will be zero so therefore there will be chances when the two surfaces will actually meet with each other in during the slide, uh, sliding and there will be sliding taking place and therefore wear will take place so even in hydrodynamic lubrication wear can take place and that's why we need boundary lubrication so the boundary lubricant in the fluid basically protects when hydrodynamic lubrication is not acting so as i said before the mixed lubrication is basically a combination of hydrodynamic lubrication and boundary lubrication so it will happen between the surfaces when for example when there is a roughness and the lubrication can be the lubricant can be present at the these contact points so this is material a and material b and these are the asperities so at the contact point the lubricant action is taking place but in other places the lubricant action is not taking place at some point there might be a uh, solid to solid contact so this situation is called mixed lubrication so mixed lubrication gives a coefficient of friction between this hydrodynamic and the boundary lubrication then after hydrodynamic lubrication we also know about what is called elasto hydrodynamic lubrication or ehl so ehl or elasto hydrodynamic lubrication is basically a hydrodynamic lubrication but in the situation when the load is extremely high and there is some amount of elastic deformation of either of these two surfaces so for example if there is elastic deformation what will happen is this curvature will not be the same but the curvature will change because of the load that is being applied and therefore because of this elastic deformation a gap will be created and the liquid can be placed in this gap so that means the 
dry contact between these two surfaces will be avoided because of the elastic deformation of one of the surfaces or both of the surfaces. So this can happen when the pressure is extremely high or when the two materials are compliant, that means the value of modulus of the material is low. So in both cases, some elastic deformation can take place at the interface and because of this elastic deformation, the liquid film can be present. So industrially, elastohydrodynamic hydrodynamic lubrication can take place, for example, in the roll mill. So when between two rolls, the, the pressure is extremely high and therefore some elastic deformation can take place and this elastohydrodynamic lubrication will occur. In the case of between tire and road, so you will see that during rainy season when there are too much of water, hydroplaning occurs. Hydroplane is formed and this formation of hydroplane is basically because of elastic deformation of these the tire and therefore water comes between the tire and the road and therefore we will lose the control because there is no friction here because there is a layer of water and this is called hydroplaning or hydroplane so this is elastohydrodynamic lubrication other forms of liquid lubrication one is called squeeze film lubrication. So squeeze film lubrication acts between two surfaces. For example, between the, these two surfaces, when they are approaching at very fast rate. So in this situation, if we have liquid here in between, then what will happen is when this surface approaches the bottom surface, this liquid will be made to flow or it will squeeze out. But if this rate of approach is extremely fast, in that case, because of the viscosity of the liquid, not all of this liquid can squeeze out. So a thin layer of the liquid will be still present in between the two. And therefore this liquid will provide lubrication to these two surfaces. So this is called squeeze film lubrication and it actually helps against any kind of vibration or impact. So as I said in the rolling element bearing, for example ball bearings, squeeze film actually helps so that the balls actually do not touch the surface because a thin layer of the liquid will be present and squeeze film action will take place and this will protect the two surfaces. Now after this we can have another type of lubrication which is known as hydrostatic lubrication. So hydrostatic lubrication is achieved when we have got two surfaces and we pump in a liquid or yes in, the, in this case we pump in the liquid. So how we can pump in is we can make this surface slightly porous or we can introduce holes. We can have many holes or we can have one single hole and through this system we can pump the liquid or liquid lubricant. So the liquid lubricant will be present here and because of this pressure the, the bearing load will be lifted or will be taken. So this is known as hydrostatic lubrication because here we are creating hydrostatic pressure which is built up because of this pumping action. So in this case we take the help of the pump to actually create this hydrostatic 
pressure here and that protects the two surfaces. So this is called hydrostatic lubrication. So these are all different types of lubrication for liquid film lubrication. Okay. The gas lubrication is also based on these principles but in gas lubrication basically we use only two types. So the first one is if we are using air so it will be known as aerodynamic lubrication and aerodynamic lubrication is based on same principle as hydrodynamic lubrication both use the Reynolds equation to to provide a, a thin layer of lubricant in between the two surfaces. So in this case air or any kind of gas we are using will be present between the two surfaces. Now another one is called aerostatic. So aerostatic is basically kind of hydrostatic lubrication where we pump in air instead of liquid. So we pump in air and it helps to lift the other surface and therefore there is a gap between the two surfaces and this provides a lubrication. So in gas lubrication basically we use these two types aerodynamic and aerostatic. In the liquid fluid, liquid fluid film lubrication we have several types of lubrication systems, so boundary lubrication, mixed, hydrodynamic, elastohydrodynamic, hydrostatic and squeeze film lubrication. So all these kind of lubrication system or mechanism can work together in one kind of uh, bearing. Now let me also differentiate between bearings and the lubrication system. So bearings are basically devices for reducing friction. So when we form this lubrication or friction reduction by means of a device then we call it a bearing. So for example we have got ball bearing, journal bearings, and there are many other types of bearings that we use for friction reduction. So these are the devices. Devices for reducing friction. So bearings also work on one of these, these lubrication mechanism or lubrication systems. So we discussed different types of lubrication or lubrication classification where we have solid lubrication, starved lubrication, grease lubrication, fluid film lubrication and fluid film lubrication can be divided into liquid lubrication and gas lubrication. Liquid lubrication can be divided into several different types boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication, hydrodynamic lubrication, elastohydrodynamic lubrication, squeeze film lubrication and hydrostatic lubrication whereas the gas lubrication is basically of two types one is called, called aerodynamic lubrication in this case air is being used most of the gas lubrication system uses air and another is aerostatic lubrication so let me give you some examples of these lubrication systems for example the crankshaft components or crankshaft of an IC engine contains many bearing systems where the hydrodynamic lubrication, mixed lubrication works. So for example in the power transmission here the journal bearing uh, the connecting rods are attached and because of the sliding between the connecting rod and the journal which is the crankshaft there will be friction and generally this part will be lubricated and it will work in many of these lubrication systems. So usually hydrodynamic lubrication, mixed lubrication or boundary lubrication 
and within this squeeze film lubrication may also be operative for example in the case of between piston piston head and the connecting rod there is a pin and between the the bushing and the pin the squeeze film lubrication can occur because in this case there will be a impact load there will be very fast load during compression and decompression and therefore the two surfaces the surface of the pin and the surface of the bushing will approach each other very fast and in this situation the squeeze film lubrication will act this example is of aerodynamic lubrication in this case this is a magnetic hard disk of a computer and this is the read write head and this is the disk where data is saved and this read write read write head actually flies over this disk and this happens because of aerodynamic lubrication because this disk rotates at extremely high speed or rpm in the range of 7000 to 10000 rpm and because of this high speed the air is dragged between the slider and the disk and this air which experiences converging flow provides the kind of load bearing that is necessary for the slider to fly over the disk because if this doesn't happen then the slider will touch the disk and there will be wear and because of wear there will be data loss so this works on the principle of aerodynamic lubrication so similarly there are many examples of all kinds of lubrication system in our engineering components or machines i would like to summarize lubrication is necessary for reducing friction in machines involving sliding as well as in rolling contacts lubricant also does the role of damping in the event of shock or vibration in engineering machines there are many types of lubrication approaches based on the mechanism of friction reduction the bearings utilize these lubrication mechanisms for friction reduction and wear minimization in one bearing usually more than one lubrication mechanism is working such that the bearings can be protected for their entire working cycles and various operating conditions thanks for watching this video if you have any question or comment please do write them down below in the comment section